They were nighters. They were the fancy term. Yes, the tins up there. <laughs> well, smoking and chewing tobacco. This is a look at here. It's, uh, they had an engine house. Uh, there was, the station was here. John Eagles over there. And Catholic Church was there. And they just recently tore up the floor and there was tracks there. Uh -huh. So they took pictures of that. It's a Y, W-Y-E, the turnaround. Yeah, we could have had them on triangles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a U.S. Mm -hmm. What did you say you found? Sydney, Australia. Oh, wow. Yeah, big, um, uh, we call it railways down there. But unfortunately, these days, as the same happened here, like, everything's just been pulled back and tracks ripped up and closed down the mines. And yeah, it's, it's a it's shame. shame. Yeah. A lot of it was melted down and sort of China. Here with Jamie at the actually the hundredth anniversary of the train disaster on uh, July sixth, nineteen twelve, Ligonier, Pennsylvania, and checking out the old red caboose as we call them here, and. Uh, I think he's having a good time. Train station. Hopefully the sound turns out good on this. It oftentimes doesn't, but if it does. I'll ask him, so what do you think, Jamie? Well we 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 call these guard vans back at home, but you guys call them traditions. It's a whole different setup. Um, looks different physically. It looks different. I guess it's got the same use. Mm -hmm. That's what we have at home. So yeah. It's a shame we can't get in there to see it. Yeah, I know. Set a fire right on the floor of the oven. They load it with logs and let it burn overnight. The heat from the fire will heat the bricks up on the inside. In the morning, the ladies will come out. They'll prepare their breads, their cakes, pies, cookies, whatever they're going to be baking that day. Um, before they're uh, going to bake, though, they have to come over and test the oven. So they open the door, and they stick their hand inside, and they count to 15. When they get to 15, if they have to take their hand out, the oven's ready to be used. They can leave it in there longer than 15. It's not hot enough. It has to heat up some more. And of course, they have to take it out before 15. It's too hot. They have to let it cool down. A couple of summers ago, I was baking bread in there, and I decided to try it to see if that was true. So when I was ready to bake, I stuck my hand in. When I got to 15, I had to take my hand out. I put a thermometer in there, and it read 350 degrees, mm -hmm. just ready for baking. So once the oven's up and ready to go, then the ladies will take a rake. Now, I know it looks like a hoe to you, but they call it a rake. And they'll stick it inside there, and they'll push any still-burning logs to either side. And then they rake the ashes off of the floor of the oven pulling them forward, there's a hole there. They drop the ashes down into that called the ash pit. So all the ashes go down into the pit. So they clear a spot on the floor of the oven. Then they take a wooden peel that you still see in pizza shops today. They put their dough on here, they put it inside, give it a shove. The dough slides off and falls right onto the floor of the oven. They can put maybe 10 loaves of bread in there at one time. They close it up and let it bake. And then when they're ready to take the bread out, they take a metal peel. So they can scrape underneath the loaves, get it off the bricks, bring it out here and set it on the table to cool. Now because you've just put raw dough on the same place where you've had a fire, the bottom of your bread is going to be black. It's going to be caked with ashes. So after the bread has cooled, the ladies roll the loaves on the side. They brush the ashes off the bottom. They cut that bottom part off and they call it cake because it was caked with ashes. But they don't throw it away. They feed it to the lower class people. Lower class people are field hands, indentured servants, children, tinkers, razor grinders, or any Indians still floating around, they would get fed the cake. The people then staying in the inn, paying for their meals in their rooms, they got served the upper crust. So they become known as the upper crust. And when Marie Antoinette said, let them eat cake, she was talking about the bottom of the bread. Okay. Down near Philadelphia. 
German farmers settled in that valley um, and they needed a nice wagon to get their produce to market and the roads were in pretty bad shape. So they come up with this design. What's really unique about the wagon is the fact that the bed of the wagon slightly bows down. In those days when they ship things, they ship in barrels. So if you load this full of barrels, the little roll to the center of the wagon, all the way would be evenly distributed between the axles. So you have a nice stable ride. The wagon itself weighs about 1,300 pounds, and it can haul between three and five tons of cargo. So this is a tractor trailer truck of its day. Now, to pull a wagon that big, you need very stout horses, so the farmers breed their own horses, and of course they call them Conestoga horses. They start with Belgian Percherons, big Belgian draft horses. They crossbreed them with Virginia mares. Virginia mares are very docile and very intelligent. So now you have a nice big animal that can pull the weight, can understand your voice commands, and won't be rearing up and taking off with the wagons. Almost a perfect horse to pull the wagon. However, they have died out. They're extinct now. You have to continually breed them. And when they quit using the wagons, they quit breeding the horses. So the horses die. But to pull a wagon this big, you need six of those horses. And here on the wall, we have a complete six-horse Conestoga hitch. This is the only place in the world where you'll be able to see a complete six-horse hitch like this. The Smithsonian Institute has one, but it's in storage. It's not on display. So it's the only place you can actually see one. How this works is the man who's driving the wagon, he's originally called a wagoner. It makes perfect sense. He's driving the wagon, called him a wagoner. As years go by, though, he becomes known as a teamster. The men who haul freight today are called teamsters. But He'll be controlling the horses with this long rein. It's called a jerk line. It's not called that because I'm holding it. <laughs> it's called that because he'll be jerking on it, telling the animal where he wants it to go. It's attached to the lead horse. That's the horse he's owned the longest. He's most comfortable with it. It knows all his commands. So he has it out there on the lead. It's attached to the off lead horse to the right with that long stick up there called a jockey stick. So he gets this horse moving where he wants it to go. It'll jockey that other animal along with it. They then will pull all their other animals behind them so he can control the whole team by controlling one horse. The reason the rain is so long is because the man does not ride in the wagon. He's going to walk back here beside the back wheel and be where he goes. Nobody rides in the back of the tractor trailer truck today. So he's walking back here. And he's going to, um, so if he's hauling from Pittsburgh to Philadelphia, he'd haul the whole way, he'd walk the whole way across the state. The reason he's back here is because when the farmers build the wagons, they know most men are right-handed. So they put the brake on the left side of the wagon. So the man can operate the brake with his strongest arm. So if he's going down the hill, he'll be reining in the animals with his left hand, bearing down on the brake with his right, trying to keep the wagon from overrunning the horses. He'll get down to the bottom of the hill, he'll let up on the horses, let up on the brake, and he'll continue to walk out the road. Now these men operate these wagons on the right hand side of the road. That way they can walk down the middle where it's a little more raised and drier. If they had the wagon in the middle, they would be walking over and more and down in the ditch. So they keep the wagons to the right side of the road so they can walk down the middle. Um, the first time they started building and using these wagons was around the 1750s. And the last time they used them was shortly after World War I, about 1920 or so. So by that time now there are cars on the roads. Since these wagons are being used on the right-hand side of the road, they put the cars behind the wagons. So that's why we drive on the right.